Hello, good afternoon. So I'm going to talk about roughly 10 things that you can try to help foster an extraordinary team. And I might also give you a quick demo on how to do a really bad Ignite. <laughs> so my name is Mark Rendell, also known as Marcos. Uh, I prefer he, him as pronouns. I'm a director in part of Accenture that specialize in all things DevOps. And these things I've kind of picked up over the last few years running uh, fairly big teams of sort of several hundred people. So an extraordinary team obviously has to do great things, but equally important is it needs to be sustainable. And to do that, people need to like or ideally love being in the team. So they want to stick together and keep growing and be part of the magic. And teams are, are really amazing in that they create a sense of belonging and purpose and safety, but they also create an outgroup of people not in the team. So um, first tip is uh, to look out for teams that you really shouldn't compete with, um, but you're maybe creating sort of negative outcomes by them, for them by not being in their team. Next thing is uh, psychological safety. So if you haven't heard of it, it's about how comfortable people uh, in a team feel to express uncertainty or doubt in front of their uh, team members. And Google did a study that showed that their most uh, successful teams had the highest levels of psychological safety. So here's a tool that we created that's online that you can use to measure or attempt to measure psychological safety with a you know, view to try and improve it. So at the start of a workshop or a, a meeting or whatever, people can anonymously score how they feel, not very unsafe. Then you can have a look at the results. And if you've got low uh, scores, it might be an idea to stop the meeting. It might be an idea to break the meeting up or just to try some things to sort of increase the safety and at least demonstrate you're interested in psychological safety. So great teams are defined by their ability to learn together. And when things do go wrong, I really like the question, where did we get lucky? Not only do you uncover some really interesting things, but you also kind of bring the team together in the sort of small bits of good fortune they actually shared. So we love automation as a way of um, speeding things up. And sharing is a really good way of speeding up learning. So I recommend uh, really rewarding and recognizing people that are good at sharing in a team, uh, sort of very publicly. And if you're not sharing, then of course, um, you're going to have single points of failure in the team. So I like the idea of kind of chaos monkey for people. So create a bit of chaos that you have control of by swapping people around for short periods of time. Find out where the gaps are, do it safely, and, and fix, uh, fix the problems you might have. Um, and if where you work, you have really nice rules like uh, you can wear whatever you want or flexible working type arrangements, don't assume that people definitely know those rules um, because they will forget them over time. So I recommend visibly actually writing them on the wall um, is a good way of keeping them true. In the Kenevin framework, I think it would uh, say that influencing culture is a complex problem, and really the only strategy is to experiment. So if you're trying things to improve ways of working, then call them experiments and get feedback from their team members as much as possible and recognize the uncertainty. And we love fast feedback from Lean, but it doesn't just apply to code, it applies to how people are feeling as well. So when you go through the airport and you see the uh, rate your experience buttons, you can do the same thing with a, a sort of an anonymous survey on the bottom of meeting invites. You know, is this meeting actually useful? So learned helplessness is a phenomenon where people start to feel um, kind of like they can't challenge illogical things and frustrating things. So tip here is to kind of try to educate each other about this and, and also other kind of unhelpful cognitive biases that everyone is kind of carrying around. So I read this on social media, but social media isn't necessarily a really bad form of distraction. So you tend to go there when your concentration is sort of broken anyway. It's interruptions that actually really hurt and harm productivity. So if you interrupt someone, you're breaking them out of a state of flow where it's probably hard to get into that state. It's enjoyable and it's productive. So really think hard about when you interrupt your uh, sort of coworkers, especially if you're a lead and your job is to try and sort of help people do their best work. Don't keep taking them out of a state of flow. And, and if you are leading people, you need to recognize that your behavior, good or bad, is very infectious and people will associate the things you do with your sort of perceived success. So lead by example. If you don't want people sending emails out of hours, then don't send them emails out of hours. So I think we all agree that diversity is essential for um, a great team. And inclusion is actually a very, very complex uh, topic, and there is always more to learn about it. So commit to doing that as a team, things like um, 
microaggression, have brown bags and, um, and, and educate each other. Finally, as John Willis so eloquently put here, the recipe for burnout is the inverse of a recipe for success. So turn to uh, useful resources like these links to understand more about the signs of mental ill health and the signs of burnout um, so that you can help each other, uh, look out for each other, be there for each other and, and be a great team. Here are some uh, useful links, interesting links, and thanks very much for your time.